everyone, this is Mr. Wallstrom. Today we're going to do a quick lesson on acceleration. Specifically, how do you calculate the acceleration of an object um, when it's changing its speed in some manner? Acceleration is defined as the rate of change in velocity over time. We're going to ignore direction in our discussion of acceleration today and really focus just on the speed component of velocity. It's a directional quantity. Like velocity, it acts in a given direction. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And it can act by changing speed, changing direction, or both. So let's take a minute to consider what happens when an object speeds up. When acceleration is acting in the same direction of motion, the speed increases. Imagine for a moment an object that is moving at a certain velocity. Let's say this arrow, which is called a vector, represents your car, and it's moving forward or upward on the screen as you look at it at a certain direction. If the vehicle accelerates in the same direction that it's already moving, well, of course, that means it's going to speed up, like you're passing something on the highway. Let's consider the next case of slowing down. When acceleration acts in an opposite direction of motion, speed it will decrease. So you're still in that car on the highway, moving at some certain velocity, but now we're going to accelerate in the opposite direction. Well, that's just like tapping the brakes or pressing on the brakes of the vehicle. It reduces the speed of the car like so. You can see here the vector got smaller to indicate that the vehicle is now moving slower. You can graph changes in acceleration on a speed time graph. On this graph, if you look at your left axis here, the vertical axis, you'll notice that speed in meters per second is indicated. And if you look at the time axis is the horizontal axis measured in seconds. So you've got six seconds measured here and speed going from zero to 12 meters per second. On section A of the graph, it looks like with each section of passing time, Speed is going, well, let's see, here's one second. That looks like it's increased from zero to about five meters per second. And at two seconds, the speed is now 10 meters per second. So it looks like at about every second of travel, the speed is going up by five meters per second. Here's one second, there's five meters a second. Here's two seconds, and we're at 10 meters per second. In section B, Speed's not changing at all. That, of course, means that speed's constant, so the acceleration must be zero. No change in speed. During section segment C here, you'll notice that as time goes from four to six seconds, time goes forward, the speed of the object decreases. So from four seconds to five seconds, a change of one second, it went from 10 to about seven meters per second. And then during the next second, it went down to four meters per second. So it looks like it's decreasing in speed about three meters per second for every second of time. Positive acceleration means you're speeding up. Negative acceleration means you're slowing down. And no acceleration, or zero, means a constant speed. Changing direction is technically an acceleration as well. When acceleration acts at some angle to the direction of motion, direction changes. Imagine the same object is moving at a certain velocity, or better yet, imagine you're riding your bicycle. If you accelerate sideways, that's the same thing as turning the wheel, which applies a force to push the front of the bicycle sideways, in this case to the right. Can you tell me what will happen if you turn the wheel to the right? 
Well, of course, the bicycle will turn to the right. The direction of the object changes in the same direction that it is accelerated. You can also calculate acceleration as long as you put your focus into changes in speed. We're not going to try to understand calculating acceleration when direction changes. Acceleration is calculated using the following formula. A is equal to SF minus SI all over delta T. Let's take a minute with that. SF represents the final speed of the object, what it ends up going. SI represents the initial speed of the object, what it began at or started as going. And delta T represents change in time. The Greek letter delta, which is a triangle, or the symbol of a triangle is used for it, means change. So delta T is the change in time it took to go from the initial speed to the final speed. Let's take a look at a simple example and try to get a feel for an acceleration problem. I want you to imagine that a car is stopped at a red light, meaning the speed equals zero meters per second. That's its initial speed. The light turns green and the driver speeds up. Six seconds later, he has reached 16 meters per second. That word later should be a trigger to indicate that this is the final speed of the car and it took six seconds for that to happen. That's the time required. That will be your delta t. What is the car's acceleration? We'll begin with the formula, and let's take a look at those numbers. We did say that the car is stopped at the red light, so the initial speed is zero meters per second. We did say that after the light turns green, he speeds up to 16 meters per second. That's the final speed. 16 meters per second right here. And we were told that it took six seconds for that change to occur. So that's your delta T or change in time, six seconds. Let's substitute those numbers into the equation. There they are. The acceleration is equal to 16 meters per second minus zero meters per second divided by six. Remember your order of operations. What do we need to do first? Hopefully you remember we have to do the subtraction first. And when we do so, we're left with 16 meters per second divided by 6 seconds. I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to take this meters per second and put the seconds under the divi division line. That's so that we understand the unit. Because we're dividing, the seconds belongs down here and we get 16 meters divided by 6 seconds times seconds. Well, when you multiply something by itself, it's called squaring. So the 16 divided by 6 gives us our numerical answer, 2.67. The unit, however, is meters divided by seconds squared. And, of course, the squared comes from the fact that the seconds are both together down here, seconds squared, 16 meters per second squared or rather 2.67 meters per second squared. Let's try an example where the object is slowing down. So the same driver is now traveling at 16 meters per second when he sees a child's ball roll into the road, chased by the child. Oh no, he slams on the brakes and 1.2 seconds later comes to a complete stop. What is the car's acceleration? Well, I'd like you to think about this. What is the initial speed of the driver? Well, it says he's traveling at 16 when he sees. So it looks like we're beginning at 16. This is going to be the initial speed. He sees the child chasing the ball and slams on the brakes. 1.2 seconds later, that means after. Well, what comes after? The final speed. He comes to a complete stop. How fast is a complete stop? If you said zero, you're correct. So we're going to use the same formula, but now the initial speed we agreed on was 16 meters per second. The final was zero meters per second, and the change in time it took was 1.2 seconds. The math is no more difficult than the last time, but it's going to look a little weird because our initial speed was zero, 
and our final is 16, you're going to be doing 0 minus 16, which, if you're thinking about this, is a negative number. And of course, your time is 1.2 seconds. Once we put all of the terms together, we subtract the numerator, you get 16 meters per second divided by 1.2 seconds. Let's move that unit down below again, just like we did before. And our answer is 13.3 meters per second squared. Oh, I've got an error here. This should be a negative number. Let's see if I can draw a, an object here. I'm going to try this. Ah, there we go, a negative number. Our correct answer is negative 13.3 meters per second squared. Well, that's it for acceleration. I hope that this um, video and the slides give you enough information to now try a couple of example problems. Best of luck, and feel, don't forget that you can always email me if you have any questions, and I can certainly work to try and help you.